So David, can you give us some practical principles of how we can defeat the giants in our lives? And so you hear David say, yeah, I can give you three. Give me three principles of how to deal with the giants in your life. The, the first principle is do not listen to negative people. That's the one. That's the one. Do not listen or refuse to listen to negative people. Because in your life, there will be negative people. And you got to know how to handle. And I'm not just talking about on the job. I'm not talking about down the Sears Roadwalk where you work. I'm not talking uh, about the gas station where you work. I'm talking about even in the church. You will find negativity. Now watch David. Before David got down to the camp, everybody was talking about Goliath. David came in the camp and brought faith in the camp. Which means that when you are dealing with a giant in your life, you have to remember that you don't focus on the giant, no matter how big that giant is. You don't focus on the child. Don't worry about how big the child is. You just rejoice of, of the fact of how big your God is. And there were so many folk who focus on their problems rather than focusing on God. Now watch this. When David, when David died, got down to the camp, his big brother was the first one to hear that he wanted to meet Goliath. Now this is his oldest brother. You see, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, your greatest difficulty is not going to come from people in the street. Sometimes your greatest difficulty will come from your own family. said in Matthew chapter 10 in verse 34 he said a man greatest foe shall be they of his own household so his brother was very negative well how do you know he was negative listen to what he said he said what you doing here what you doing down here not that I'm glad to see you he didn't ask how Papa doing. What you doing down here? And with what's this? With whom did you leave those few sheep with? Now I know he's being negative, and the reason I know he's being negative is because he used the word few. Why couldn't it just be sheep? But he says. understand as you go through life and as you live the Christian life. Folk who are intimidated by you and jealous of you, they always try to pull you down to that size so they can manage you. You see what I'm saying? And you got to understand that dynamic. When folk talk about you and negative toward you, they trying to manage you. They trying to get you down to their level so they can control you. But that's what the brother, you see, that's what the brother said. And we talk, you see, everybody who call you brother or sister may not be your brother or sister. And I go, if I go a little further than that, or because somebody have your same color, may not be your brother. Negativism. Negativism. And, 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 and not, only, uh, not only that, but 
But then he goes to meet, he goes to meet the king. And the king says to him, you're not able to, to meet this giant. You know, I thought about that. I thought about that. And here's what I came up with. That giant, watch this, that giant was not David's giant. That was Saul's giant. So many times we spend a lot of time trying to control somebody else's giant. So many times we spend all of our time trying to deal with giants that's not even ours. So many times we are dealing, we are having trouble in our lives because we are dealing with mama's giant, daddy's giant, and daddy's giant. My grandmama's giant. And as a result, you can't be the Christian that you want to be because you're dealing with somebody else's giant. Here's what you got to understand. You have to understand that every man must bear his own burden. You see, there are some things that you can't do for folk. Now, uh, it, uh, Paul makes clear that we are to bear one another's burden. He makes clear, but you got to understand that text. So, you know, what that means is, you know, if you were sick, I will go to the pharmacy and get your medicine for you and even pay for your medicine, but I ain't taking your medicine. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so, uh, so Saul, that was Saul's child. And many of us have trouble in our lives as children of God because we are dealing with somebody else's job. Help everybody that you can. Be nice to everybody that you can. But just know who your giants are. And then, uh, negative people. How to deal with negative people. And let me just tell you how to deal with negative people from this point on. Um, and I'm going to tell you like T-Mobile said. Scroll, select, and delete. Okay. I'm telling you, that's what you deal with. That's what you deal with. Scroll, select, and delete. You don't have anything good to say about the church? Scroll, select, delete. You don't have anything good to say about the preacher and his wife? Scroll, select, and delete. And delete. If you don't, if you don't have anything that's good to say to me, and everything coming out of your mouth is negative, scroll, select, and delete. That's the way you deal with it. You deal with it because you see, you can lose your mind worrying about other people and their problems. You're going to have to, as a child of God, you're going to have to help as many folk as you can. But you're going to have to know that to get negativity out of your life, some stuff you just have to scroll, select, and delete. Let it go in one ear and out of the other. Do not allow, do not allow folk to use your head for a hat rack. The church would never go so if people are going to listen to negativism. So what you have to what you have to understand is that there are some battles you have to know when to fight. And, and I tell preachers this too: you can't fight every battle. You can't fight every battle. You see, every church you now every church you go to, every and when I went to the Golden Heights Church, when I walked in there, they were having problems. When I walked in, and, and I came in from Texas. But when I walked in, they were having difficulties. They were having problems in some areas. Those were not my problems. That wasn't even there. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't even there. You see? But sometimes, folk want you to deal with other folk problems. And what you have to know is when to fight. When to go to war and be 
sure that you're not fighting somebody else's problems. And so, this boy said to, uh, to his brother, he said, uh, what you doing down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep? You see, that's designed to bring David down. That's designed to make David think he's not qualified or big enough for the job. And you gotta wonder, and people would do you that way. So what you have to have is an attitude. You see, you have to have an attitude. You have to go through life with an attitude. Because everybody is not gonna speak well of you. And it doesn't matter how good you are, they're not going to speak well of you. So what does that mean? That means that you are going to have to accept yourself. You see, the people who don't like me are people who don't like themselves. And I'm in control with me. Now you may be out of control, but I'm in control with me. You see, when folk speak negatively of other folk and speak negatively of you, understand that they have the problem. For an example, the Emperor Charles, you know, you look at me tonight and you say, well, Doc, you know, that, that's a, I, I don't like that suit, I don't like that color. That's not my problem. That's not my problem. That's your problem. Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm not going to take your problem. Because I, 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 when I put this thing on at the, the hotel, I let Bert on the go. I mean, I thought I looked pretty cool. Really? I, I really did. You see? And I'm not going to allow someone to cause me uh, to feel bad because they have a problem. So what we have to do, if you're going to go through life, you're going to have to be satisfied with yourself. Be satisfied with yourself. Be satisfied with yourself. I mean, if your ears are a little, if your ears are a little large, or if your nose is a little large, but be, be satisfied with yourself. Satisfied with yourself. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about folks and I don't like you. Well, I'm sorry you got that problem. You see? Negativism. So what David is saying to us, uh, even as children of God, particularly uh, our young folk, don't listen. Refuse to listen to negativism. There'll be folk who will tell you, you ain't going to never be nothing. You just like your daddy. Are you just like your mom? Your daddy wasn't nothing and your mama wasn't nothing and you're not going to be nothing. That's negativism. And what you have to do, you have to get above that. You have to recognize that I am somebody. I'm made in the image of God. God made me, and God don't make no bad stuff. They have to have that self-image. Because if you don't have that self-image, and if you are not able to scroll, select, and delete, you'll be miserable all of your life. Father's sheep, and then he told that story about the Lord 
blessed him and strengthened him to kill the bear and to kill the lion. And, and what, what David said was, inasmuch as God was with me then, he's going to be with me now. You must not ever lose faith. Don't ever lose faith. Don't ever let anybody take your faith. Don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do a certain thing. You can do whatever God gives you the power to do. Graduation speaker yes. uh, when I graduated uh, from Bishop College out there in Dallas, Texas, Dr. King. I did the commencement address. And, uh, uh, and I heard Dr. King quote Dr. King says, If it falls your lot to sweep streets, then you sweep those streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. You you sweep those streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. And when you lay down to die, folk will pass by your castle and say, here lies a man who swept his streets well. So whatever it falls your lot to do, if it's just, if it's just an ordinary task, do it well. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all of your might because you are in charge of you. Uh, the poet says, I in the, in the, in the poem called uh, Invictus, the poet says, out of the night that covers me, black as a pit, from pole to pole. I fear not what other gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fair clutch of circumstance, I have not cried aloud. Tested weapons. Amen. David said, I can't, I can't use your stuff, okay? I can't be you. Now it's all right to imitate. You, you know, because we are imitators of Christ. It, it's all right to imitate. You have to have someone to imitate. Have to have someone to imitate. So I said, well, I'm just gonna be me. Well, that's okay if you reach that point. If you reach that point, but now if you haven't reached the me point, then you better find you somebody that you can imitate. But you don't want to follow a crowd, and young folks, you don't want to follow a crowd. As I said to you last night, I believe it was that if you find somebody not going your way, they're in your way. You see, understand who you are, understand what your limits are, stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Every one of us have a lane. Stay in there. And not only stay in your lane, but obey the speed limit. That is, know how fast you can go. You, you can't run as fast as you used to. Uh, you know what, when I, was, when I was in college on a football scholarship, I ran track and, and played football. You know, and I was pretty good at track and very good at football. You know, but now, ain't no running no track now. No, 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 ain't no running track. All I can do is wave at you. You see? Because I know what my limits are. Every man, every woman has limits. That's why the scripture said abstain from the very appearance of evil. Oh, I'm strong. I mean, the devil is stronger than you are. You see? And so recall past uh, experiences. God. And that 
mean just know that God brought me out over here and the same God that brought me out over here that same God will bring me out over here you see what I'm saying don't forget the fact you say well I don't know what God has done for me well let me help you out when you got up this morning that was God bringing you out the, the, the alarm clock your telephone didn't wake you up because my mom tries to don't wake people up. No, don't wake people up. No, because if, if, a, if a mom try to wake folk up, all you can do is put it out there in the graveyard and let it go off and see how many folk get up. No, no. It was God that woke you up. It was God that allowed you to get out of the bed. As the song said, grace woke me up this morning. And it was grace that starts you on your way. And, and so uh, tonight I say to you, uh, young folk as well as adults, just know that there is a God somewhere. And that God walks with you. And that God talks with you. And that God gives you what you cannot give yourself. And so I'm saying to all of our, all of the church young folk, hold to God's unchanging hand. Unchanging hand. You young ladies, hold to God. Unchanging hand. You mothers and fathers, hold to God. Unchanging hand. God will never fail you. He'll always be there. And not only will he always be there, but he is going to prepare a place for you. Jesus says, I will go and prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. You know, God has programmed for all of us. You know, that there is a program for alcoholics. There is a program for those on drugs. There is a program for those who are diabetics. There are, program, there are all kinds of programs out there. But God got a program. And his program is the ABC program. God has an ABC program. And the ABC program is anybody can. That's his program. Any Anybody can. Anybody can be saved. Mark 16, 15, and 16. Anybody not only can be saved, but anybody can be forgiven of their sins. If they come boldly to the throne of God, God will forgive you. Anybody can be set free. For if the Son man sets you free, Makes you free, then you are free indeed. Anybody that God sets free, He gives them citizenship. I say He gives them citizenship. Citizenship in a city that we call no more. God got a city that's called the city of no more. What kind of city is that? The city. Of no more. A city where there will be no more cursing. A city where there will be no more stress. A city where there will be no more tears. No more pain. No more dying. No more liars. No more backfire. No more night. No more hypocrites. No more hospital. No more undertaker. No more people stabbing you in the back. The Bible says there is a city where the wicked cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. Or oh, there's a city called the city of no more. No more death. No more pain. No more sorrow. But the former thing a passed away. I know you want to go to the city of no more. That's the city where we all are wants to go. And we thank God for that. We thank God for that. We thank God for the fact that God uh, loved us. He loved us to the end. And he came his only begotten son. He loved us. He loved us. And not only uh, did he love us, but when I, when I read the Bible, when I read the Bible, I 
see God at his best. When I, when I read the book of Genesis, I see where God spoke the word into existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see where God hung the stars in the elements. And he made the moon the queen of the, day, of the night. Sun, the queen of the day, and he hung the stars in the chandeliers of heaven. And whatever God said, it came to pass. And when I read that, I say, My friend, that's God at his best. But then there's a key read. There's a key read. I say, No, maybe that's not God at his best. I see God when he spoke to Moses when the children of Israel wanted water and God said well just go ahead speak to the rock and water is going to come from the rock and when I see Israel 600,000 drinking water from the rock I said that must be God at his best but then as I keep reading the Bible so I don't know whether that's God at his best or not. Because when I get to Joshua, I see where God tells Joshua, step in the water. And wherever the feet of the priest hit, the water is going to roll back. And I said, that must be God at his best. But the more I read, I get the impression that that's not God and his men. Well then when I get over in Daniel, I see Daniel in the lion's den. And not only is he in the lion's den, but it looks like Daniel is going to be devoured by the lion. But then God locked the jaw of the lion and the lion couldn't bother them. And I said, oh, that must be God at his best. But when I keep reading, I find three boys, and their name is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible said they put him in the fire. You know the story. But when they put him in the fire, the Son of God came down in the middle of the fire. God So that must be God at his best. But then when I keep reading, when I keep reading, I, I see a woman that didn't know a man, never had sex with a man, but she's pregnant. And she's pregnant by a heavenly being. And this woman gave birth to the Son of God by virgin birth. And when I read that, I said that must be, that must be God at his best. But then when I kept reading, I find that there was one day uh, Jesus out on a boat and he was asleep uh, down in the hull of the ship and the wind started blowing and the sea started rowing and he got up and spoke to the wind and the wind stopped blowing spoke to the water and the water stopped rowing and even the disciples said what manner of man is this and I said to myself that must be God at his best but I can't believe it and when I got over to the graveyard in Bethany, I found that a man had been dead for four days and his body was stinking. But then Jesus walked over and said, show me where you lay. And the Bible said, he called him by his name. And Lazarus, being dead four days, got up. Jesus said, lose him and let him go. I said, there must be 
God at his best. But then I kept reading. And as I read, I found that when Jesus was in the hall of Pilate, uh -huh, they slapped him and they spit on him and they put a crown of thorns on his head and he never said a mumbling word. I said, there's got to be God at his best. But then I kept reading. And the Bible said he went on now uh, to the hill of Golgotha. And there they nailed him to the cross. And I heard him say, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And he said, it is finished. And I said to myself, that must be God at his best. But I kept on reading. And I kept on reading. And I found out that uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he made a way that a sinner like you and me, and all the mean things that I do, and all the mean things that you have done, with the blood of Jesus, God fixed the way that the worst sinner in the world can have everlasting life. That's God at his best. When God can take a low down rascal, when God can take a dice shooter, when God can take a prostitute, when God can, when God can take a, a pimp, when God can take a dope dealer, wash them, make them clean, and wash away their sin. That's God. And his fish. I thank God for that. I thank God that God had me on his mind. When he hung on the cross of Calvary, God had me on his mind. And I'm glad tonight that Jesus is my Savior. I'm glad tonight that he is the root, the offspring of David. He's the bright and the morning star. He's the lily of the valley. I tell you who he is. He's a fire chief in the fiery furnace. I tell you who he is. He is a, was a speed cop on the road to Damascus. Stopped on Paul and turned him around and made him a child of God. Died and got up early Sunday morning and fixed it so that if I live right and if I act right and if I do right, I will die right. And if I die right, Tell the 
story. I'm going to tell the story of Jesus Christ, the master's son of God. Because I heard Paul tell today, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead, and is a period in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, prayer and rebuke. Get your hand in God. 
God's hand when you got your hand in God's hand. You got your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. And if you got your hand in the man from Galilee, everything will be all right. Just put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. If you are here tonight, if you are here tonight, just know everything will be all right. It might get dark and the giants may come uh, in your room. But just know that God is a giant killer. I say God is a giant killer. I say God will take care of your giants. If you would just put your trust in God. Well, Brother Preacher, how can I put my trust in God? Well, to put your trust in God, you're going to have to listen to the Holy Spirit. I say you're going to have to listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is that one of the Godhead that convicts and he convicts through the word. The Holy Spirit goes to work in your life through the word. He does not operate independent of the word because the word is the soul of the spirit. But Brother Preacher, how can I receive the Holy Spirit? Well, I'll tell you how you receive it. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 5 and verse 32 that God gives his spirit to all them that obey him. And then when I read Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 37, I hear that crowd saying, uh, when they heard this, they said, men and brethren, what must we do? And what what Peter said. Peter said, repent and be baptized. and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You cannot receive the gift of the Holy Spirit until you do what Peter said do on the day of Pentecost. And that is through faith and obedience. Obey God. And in baptism, you receive what God gives us as a gift. And that's the Holy Spirit. And if you, want, if you don't have the Holy Spirit tonight, there's no way to receive him. There is no way to get him unless you get him by the direction of the Lord. And the Lord has said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you shall receive. You shall receive. Now the question is, do you want to receive? You've got to receive the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can receive the Holy Spirit is by obedience to the word. You say, though he were a son, yet when he obedient by the thing which he suffered, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. You can have the Holy Spirit of God. The most important person on the face of the earth today is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And no child of God no child of God ought to quench the Spirit of God. Every child of God needs to have the Spirit of God, but you don't get the Spirit of God until you obey God. Because God gives His Spirit to all them that obey Him. So, and how do you obey Him? Like they did on the day of Pentecost. 